Stop and Me Bird Ranks It recently won the Roger Damner 115 pound title against Siphonoi in a rematch of a fight that took place several months ago. Siphonoi won the first fight largely by controlling Fab and Me with knees in the clinch, but Fab and Me was able to shut his clinch down in the rematch with intelligent tactics. In their first fight, Siphonoi would enter the clinch off his knees or reactively by slipping Fab and Me's punches, and Fab and Me would respond by tying up. Trying to grab the head in a collar tie or locking around it is traditionally a tall man's game, as height provides leverage to grab the head while keeping your arm tight to your own body where it's most powerful. When Fab and Me grabbed his collar tie, it invited the taller Siphonoi to lock around his head. From his lock, Siphonoi could match Fab and Me's height and use his head to frame off while flaring out his shoulders and back, giving him space to throw hard knees, while the shorter Fab and Me was forced bolt upright, having to make do with short punches and elbows. In their rematch, Fab and Me stopped trying to lock up with Siphonoi and instead committed to framing off. Whenever Siphonoi reached for the clinch, Fab and Me would control inside the biceps with both hands. This prevented the taller man from reaching his head and controlling his posture. From inside bicep control, Fab and Me's short stature worked in his favor, as getting underneath an opponent and inside their hands provides you superior pushing leverage. Siphonoi was forced backwards and forced upright consistently, unable to control Fab and Me's head or plant to land hard knees. Establishing inside control on the biceps and forcing Siphonoi back meant that Fab and Me had control of the clinch exits, and he consistently landed big shots in the break. With his hands on the biceps, Fab and Me could quickly push Siphonoi off and fill the space with flurries of punches, putting him on the defensive and forcing him to abandon the clinch range. Strike selection was also important for Fab and Me when striking on the break. He would often initiate his combos with an elbow at short range to force Siphonoi into punching distance, and then he'd follow up his punches with kicks if Siphonoi tried to avoid them by backing out of range. Fab and Me employed consistent lateral movement to defuse Siphonoi's knee and clinch entries. Most of Siphonoi's clinch entries involved a linear grab for the head or a spearing knee, and Fab and Me would pivot off to break the line of attack, taking him out of Siphonoi's trajectory. Siphonoi was forced to stop and turn to face Fab and Me, which opened him up to further strikes. Fab and Me was largely able to keep Siphonoi from locking his head at all, but he had counters prepared for that as well. When Siphonoi entered on the head, Fab and Me would look to immediately turn and sweep before Siphonoi could establish his positioning. When Siphonoi did manage to find a deeper lock in the clinch, Fab and Me would fight the grip instead of trying to lock up with Siphonoi. He would weaken the lock by putting pressure under the armpit on the arm around his head and look to establish head position before turning to break Siphonoi's balance and exiting the clinch.